Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're gonna do a Q&A related to my career on YouTube and odd jobs that I had prior to YouTube. I'm in my closet. It's nighttime right now. I'm relaxed. We don't have to deal with like the sun and the clouds and all of that. So I just felt like putting on makeup and James and I were talking the other day about just YouTube and the journey and odd jobs and how things have ebbed and flowed, how things have just really gone, I mean, every which direction and what a weird career, right? The questions did roll in that could totally get me into trouble. I literally feel like, is my lawyer on speed dial? Because I might need to call you and ask if I can say X, Y, Z. That is probably the number one stressor of doing what I do. It's like you are under such a microscope and especially with me being in litigation still. It's just never ending. It's super stressful. I don't want to stay on that too long, but it does feel very strange that literally like every word that I throw out can be like used as a weapon against me. And that sucks because I am a person that I just love to overshare. Sadly, that's had to kind of be toned down a little bit, I would say during the past couple of years, um, just out of wisdom. What a way to start the video. Let's get primed up and start actually doing some makeup and then we'll get to the Q&A. I have looked at a few questions and my heartbeat is going like this. Um, so anyway, how are you guys? I'm gonna start priming and getting rid of the extreme look of my pores. In this room, the lighting definitely makes me look a little more shiny. I have to say, I tried this out the other day, the Iconic Underglow Blurring Primer, and this I hated at first, okay? And you're probably like, why are you gonna use it again? I do not like the scent. It is very rose scented. I felt upon application that it made my face a little bit too shiny. However, I had one of the best makeup days ever of all time. Like my skin looked so good that now I'm like, well, maybe it was this, like, cause everything else I used was like the normal stuff that I use. So I don't know what the deal was, but we're going in again and we will see. I think this might be like a hidden gem type of an item. Also, I'm sitting here and I barely have a mirror, a Huda Beauty Compact. The Empowered Palette is right in front of me and is my mirror. Behind it is a water bottle and it's up on a small stack of other compacts. And that is the level of professionalism in this video talking about my professional career. Okay, what magic is this? Honestly, what is in here that is doing this? To my it makes your skin look so good but it is like a serum that is blurring. I don't really understand you, but I like you. Alrighty, so let's go into the questions. I am gonna be mixing the Ambient Hourglass Foundation with a little bit of the Crunchy Foundation. I will have everything listed below. So if I just like start slapping things on and you're like, whoa, whoa, what did she use? It will be listed below in the description box. Ooh. Someone says, what would you tell your younger self about where you are now in life with YouTube as your career? I would say run, I would say run. Buy that farm now, live a simple life now. Um, jokes aside, YouTube has been both a blessing and has been equally traumatizing to me, you guys. And there's no one doing it. Like there's legitimately, there's no like erase button I'm already out there on the internet. I cannot take it back. I can't go in my time machine. And it doesn't mean that I'm not grateful for the audience and for what I do as a job. I'm just saying like it has come with its own certain level of trauma that has changed me. I, I feel like I've come out better and it has changed me for the better, but it's been painful. And I never thought it would be. I thought it would just be playing with makeup, this would be a part-time thing, it wouldn't take so much out of me. I don't know, I thought by now I would have a couple kids and this would be even more of a hobby, but it is what it is. I now see social media very differently. To be entirely fair, YouTube was so different way back when. There wasn't even Instagram when I started out. It now is just, it's not even that it's so saturated. Social media has lost part of its soul. There's like a connection loss or something. There's just something that changed along the way. 
the drama definitely changed everything. The exposing one another, like, man, I've, I've learned. I've, and I participated and experienced the punchback of all of that. You know, it's been very, very painful. These have been big lessons to learn, you know? I don't know that I would have learned if I had never started my channel. I'm realizing that I answered the first question, uh, advice for YouTube, and I'm like, run for the hills. That wasn't very nice. I'm just saying you, if you are sensitive, doing social media might not be for you. And I started out very, like you could hear in my voice, I'm like, hey guys, like I was so sweet and so sensitive and just really had just like, I don't know, a different kind of innocence to me at the time. And YouTube kind of just like did this to me and I changed, I changed so much. So I think that the first thing, if you're gonna start a channel is to realize that it may change your view of people. It may expose you to a different side of humanity that you might find surprising. How long did it take for you to start earning income from your videos? People are always super, super curious. Like, how do you make money on YouTube? Or they used to be. Like, I used to go get my hair done and even like the hairstylist might be like, well, but how do you earn money? Like, how do you even make a living? And people would really want to know like a detailed itemized amount. And it just blew my mind because I've never in my life gone up to other people and been like, hey, how much money do you earn? And what do you make per hour? And like, do you have insurance? Or like, how does that work? I'm using the Conceal the Deal Lawless Concealer in the shade Ballet. I didn't make any money for years. Literally, I'd make like a couple hundred bucks, but I mean, come on, when you are putting in so much time and effort, a couple hundred bucks is like barely covering what you're spending on getting the makeup to review. I thought it was so much fun to connect with beauty lovers and I just really loved makeup at the time and I wanted to be a part of something and it was nice, but it was not about the money. Did I think that it could turn into something? Yes. I always saw that YouTube could be something really big, like, or maybe I'm just a total dreamer where I was like, oh my gosh, this could be it. Because I said that like about a lot of things. I always was that person that had so much hope, like everything's gonna be amazing. Uh, so I had hope, but not many people around me did and I was not making money and it definitely took years before I was actually making a livable income. I don't know how that would go for someone starting out right now. So much has changed, but back in the day, you really had to hustle it hard for a couple of years to kind of see that return. This foundation combo is a dream come true, okay? I'm loving it. The Lawless Concealer, also a dream come true. A little bit of Patrick Ta on the Beauty Blender, just on the, the fat portion, boom, boom, boom. A dream come true. We have more coverage here. Okay, not career related at all, but someone, not someone, a few people are like really wanting to know. They're like, Tati, why did you stop Botox? It used to be such a secret. Like if you got Botox, people are like, oh my gosh, you are full of yourself. And like, how dare you do this? And so it had its own weird stigma back then of getting it. And now it's like, oh my gosh, I can't keep up. Like I'm in some kind of weird vortex where it's flipped and people feel almost offended. Not all people, but some people are like, well, you know what? I get it and I feel great and you won't stop me. And I'm like, well, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to stop you. You do you. I definitely have done that. When I had my big, huge spiritual awakening, which I am not going to talk about for a while. I know you guys are just like, please tell me more. Uh, and I'm just not there yet. I'm going through a couple of speed bumps, um, not spiritually, but just like anchoring in to my belief system. I don't want to be someone that pops online and is like, guess what? This is it. Like while I'm still figuring things out, you know, I mean, I don't think that's exactly responsible, but I will share with you guys, there were definitely things in my spirit that changed. I had this desire in me to not 
be so vain. And that was a really big thing to be uncovered in me because I was always all about chasing perfection. I wanted the lips and the filler and I wanted the perfect skin and I wanted the line-free skin and I was just never gonna age. And it's not to say that I don't still like feeling beautiful, you know? I like getting my hair done and I like painting my nails and taking care of my skin. I just do it differently now and there isn't such like reverence to needing to be the best. And so like that was softened in me. And I just felt like it would be a little bit hypocritical of me to move into this more natural, embrace your natural self era if I was still doing all the things. And that might change. Like I wanna give myself permission to always evolve and change. Reason number two is it's a neurotoxin and I started freaking out about putting something like so close to my brain that is a neurotoxin and I feel like it moves through the body somehow. Like I've heard of people having crazy complications and I just was like, yeah, you know what? No, it costs so much money. It's painful. You can bruise, you can have complications. And at the end of the day, what do you get? You get like a frozen face. And I would rather look mobile and kind of wrinkly and more my actual age than be a slave to getting Botox all the time. And also I'm like, I have a husband who, and not that we just look good for our partners, but it's so funny because he will tell me, he's like, you know, you look more beautiful now than ever. He's like, you don't need to do that. Like, why do that? Like, who are you doing that for, for you? Is it really for you or is it for other people? So I think I'm kind of approaching beauty with that, like, is this truly for me or is this for how everybody else sees me? I didn't know how crippling being super duper obsessed with how I look was to my life. And that's shifted and changed and I'm embracing it. I am gonna go way back, throw it way back to a little Cody Airspun. And also you guys, this little guy right here, this velour puff from Rose and Ben, the point on here is so good, so, so good. I am loving this. You guys know, obviously I love a good velour puff. The point here gets right up. Boom, boom, boom. Press it in. Oh my gosh, I hear James. Why is he coming back here? It's either James or it's Puka. One of the two. What do you want? Hello. Oh, it's both of you. Hi. This is the part of the video where I come in. Oh no, it's not James. To check, to check the battery and to make some sort of wisecrack. I thought you were just crashing my video. Well, I was kind of crashing your video. But... Are you showing the pook? Okay, Puka update for you all. He's like, get me out of here. I hate this so much. Oh, you're holding your tummy, good boy. Oh, look at him staring at you. Hello. This is true love right here. I love that little guy. Yeah. You're a good boy. Yeah, your tongue's getting better. Yes, so look he's he's got a little more movement in his face. Oh, you just want to squeeze him. I just, you guys don't even understand. I'm so obsessed with this dog. So that's your Puka update. How about a James update? What kind of update would you like? Let me ask you some, wow, I look crazy sitting here like this one. Oh my gosh, this powder, I forgot how intense this is. Hold on, I think it's on a, where are you fixing me? Thank you. Yes. Biggest deal you turned down. Can I even answer that? Well, would it be for me or would it be for- No, for me, your, your but you know, there are a few. Yeah, we had that multi palette deal with BH Cosmetics. Yeah. A million palettes per palette. <laughs> a million palettes per, oh, per palette, yeah. yeah. They want to do like four palettes. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to make makeup in China. I wanted to quality be able, control. yeah, quality control and, and to be more hands-on. So yeah. yeah, I've turned down a lot this year. That's for sure. Yeah, well, no, she glam offered you a fortune too. <sighs> That's what I was saying, but I don't think that we can say the name, can we? Why not? Okay. There's no confidentiality. Oh yeah. This is the one of the weirder things in my spiritual walk is if I feel it's a hard no, it is a hard no. I and I'm like, ah! <laughs> and so I turned it down and they came back and offered more money. Some of their makeup is good. Some of their makeup is fine. I just, again, it goes to that quality control and 
corporate ethics. I mean, can I say I turned down a million dollars from Clarisonic? Whoa. Oof. Oh, in Amazon. And then... I've turned down millions. Why? Well, first and foremost, it was because you were trying to... Honor. I thought that I was doing the, you know, righteous thing by only promoting Halo and Tati Beauty. And um, I never made any money from Tati Beauty. That's like the big like mic drop. Like if you want some tea, everybody thinks like, oh my gosh, she just cashed that check and rolled off into the sunset. And that's just not what happened. So there, yeah. you know. I'm going to go back to watching sports unless you need me. No, thank you for hanging out for a minute. You know, this powder is a little heavy, but man, does it make you look so flawless. I need some bronzer. I need some brows. I need a lot of things. I'm gonna try a new bronzer. This is the Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Bronzer in Fair from L'Oreal. I'm gonna use a Rowan Blush and Blend brush. This bronzer is going on so nice. I kind of cannot even believe it. Why are you working so well? Okay, so I'm trying to read, there's a lot. Worst or funny customer experience when you worked in retail? Um, I've had many, many jobs. I have worked kiosks. I have worked at The Gap, Starbucks. I sold jewelry at Costco. I washed dogs. I was a bartender. I've had many different jobs. I don't know why this is like coming up in my mind, but at Costco back in the day when I used to sell jewelry, I did like the jewelry roadshow and I watched someone from the booth where I was working, like kind of near the front of the store, literally wait in line at Costco at the return section with the bones of a rotisserie chicken. And I really just wanted to know like, what is the story with this? Because like the meat is gone and you are in line to clearly return this rotisserie chicken. I don't know why that is standing out in my mind. Also, because I did the jewelry thing for like a couple of years, I think it was a couple of years, I saw someone try to steal golf clubs like walking out of Costco. Like there's a lot that goes down at Costco. A lot of people fighting over pies. Um, that would happen around the holidays. Just like exciting times. Um, I would work literally, I do road shows, so I would work open to close, I kid you not. I would go into the restroom and like sit on the toilet and just like want to cry because being on concrete like that, your legs hurt so bad. It's like the store's open and you are not leaving until 8.30 at night and you're gonna come back the next day and do it again. And it was a good job at the time. It allowed me to work for a minute and then take time off and then go on the road again. And you know, I don't regret doing it. It's actually, fun fact, my younger sister, Sabrina, she worked the road shows too. Like it was a lot of us in our family that did this. And she met her husband who worked at Costco like while she was doing the show. So that's kind of like a yay, happy ending there. I would also like, I'd be like, I'm gonna walk around the store and I'd like take my name tag off and I would literally hit up every sample person. And I'd be like, hey, what's up? And like they knew I worked there. And so they like give me like a little, little more sample. Man, I would just like feast on those Costco samples. That is another great memory. I bought a lot of things at Costco too. Cause I would just like shop there. I'd be like, oh my gosh, can you even believe they have true religion jeans here? Like it, it was a whole time of my life. Um, okay, we need blush. This blush just never fails. They have new packaging. This is rose pink from Honest. It's really good. I'm gonna do a little highlight um, because I like it. And I'm gonna put it on my body too. All right, we're gonna go into, I think this is rose gold from Scott Barnes. Just do a little of this. I'm gonna go into this Cleo palette and use these two shades right here for brows. I 
I'm gonna use a little bit of this for eyeshadow and the Huda Beauty palette. So let's just get down with that. This is a lot of questions within one. How has not living in LA changed your view of being an influencer and has the location change increased your passion for content creation or decreased it? What is your biggest regret during your YouTube career? What is your best memory from your YouTube career? Wow, okay. Um, so let's go ahead and start with eyeshadow. Um, I'm gonna start blending. Moving away from LA was really a good idea for me to just not get trapped in that Hollywood mindset anymore. I'm still healing, like that's the thing. I think that's more what I wanna focus on. I'm still healing. I'm still dealing with some trauma from everything and that might sound a little over the top being like, oh, trauma from what? You did it yourself. You said this in that video or you did that. Well, the whole thing is a real big knot of a mess. I have, you know, things that I said online in my past over here and just like the anguish of it and a lot of unresolved feelings about what happened. Uh, and then I have litigation, which just collapsed everything that I had been striving for. So it feels like a lot of feelings and emotions still that are settling out. And there's been a beautiful undoing in the process. So moving away from LA has hurt, but it has also opened my eyes to a different way of being and a different way of thinking and a different view of everything. Like I was telling James the other night, I was like, do you know how I feel about not being in everything anymore? Like not being the most fabulous woman or like aspiring to be that like, wanting to walk red carpets and like do the whole thing and like dreaming about being famous and like that whole thing. Cause like, man, I wanted it. It's like, I want that billboard and I want that big brand and I want all of it. And I'm going to work myself to the bones until I get it. And I had a lot of success. Like things were going really, really well. And I would enjoy spending my money on bags and fashion and crap that honestly means Jack Ola. We can't take any of this stuff with us when we die. And that was like the biggest wake up call of my life because not to get too much into the spiritual stuff, but man, my spiritual eyes are open. And when you have that happen, you see things entirely and radically different. And you're like, this life is so small. Like this life truly is vapor. It is but a breath in the larger picture of eternity. And I wanna live well and I wanna treat people with as much love and compassion, really unbitter myself and be forgiving and put my feelings down in a way, not to be trampled on or to have poor boundaries. I do love myself, but I'm called to love others too. I feel so different about everything. And what I was telling James is like, it's like when you get out of a relationship that you thought was good, and then you look back, hindsight's 2020, and you're like, oh my gosh, I would never, like, why was I with that person? I let them treat me this way. I sacrificed things for them. I was miserable. I was never happy. They took advantage of me. Like, I can't believe that I called that love. And that's how I feel about LA. I'm sorry if that offends you. It's just dog eat dog. And for me, I'm so grateful to have escaped what many hold as that mindset. And I know a lot of you watching live there and I don't think everyone from LA is evil or bad. I'm talking mainly about the industry and the competitiveness and the lust for all the things material and calling that your value. There's a grieving process to it too, because like my whole identity was in things. My whole identity was like, what new jewelry can I get? And what is my next luxury purse and shoes and new car? And while there's a space for that, because I don't want to be this person that's like, I'm never gonna ever enjoy um, XYZ again but it's just that consumption thing. It's so soul stealing, you don't need it. And if you're hanging around people that make you feel like you do to be seen and valued, you are hanging around the wrong people. Let me save you some time, get to know yourself, be good with being alone. That was probably the most powerful thing that happened to me through this whole experience was I had about four months of absolute solitude and it was just me and God and I turned everything off. I did not use entertainment, social media, movies, books, music, everything. I like full, full on wilderness season, went in it 
and just became undone, wanted to change, wanted to see who I really was because I had gotten lost along the way. And I'm grateful that I went through that. It was super painful, super uncomfortable, and I didn't know what was going to happen with me and James, but this time was really, really special. Like I look back fondly on it now and I'm like, oh my gosh, you change completely. You want like a soul makeover, go quiet. Like even if it's just a couple of days or a week, like be okay being alone. And that will give you this incredible superpower where you're like, yeah, I like my own company and I don't need to be validated by others. And I can work on myself authentically without all of that noise and people pleasing. And I can really love people, you know, to full circle it, you know, love yourself as you love others. I think something that's so disjointed in the world is we have a lot of self-hatred and we try to do affirmations or like, I love myself. And it's like, that is surface. Like you can say those things and maybe neurologically get like a hit of, you know, some positive change. I'm sure people have measured that. But if you don't get into the soul and you don't actually really find ways to value who you are, you're pouring into others and you're loving others is not going to be as authentic. So give yourself space to love yourself truly in all of your flaws, in all of yourself, without all the things, and um, and then extend it out. So that's kind of kind of what happened to me. Gosh, I could really go off on this stuff. Okay, back to what was I even doing? I just really, I she went off for a minute. Ooh, let's go into the shade manifest it because that seems appropriate. Um, I'm gonna go just on the lid using my fingertips. This is so pretty. I swatched this shade in the unboxing and I was just like, yep, this is the one. It's kind of creamy. It's super reflective, super beautiful. Yes, no, do we like it? It's a little more coppery than I thought for some reason. Let's go into bold moves and just kind of pat, pat, pat that on top of it. Okay, yeah, there we go. That's good. Okay, I'm gonna line. I'm gonna go into this Stila liner. All right, we're gonna crack into this velour little limited edition twice as nice holiday set. Oh my gosh, I never fully answered the question, the three part question. It was like, did LA change your view? And I'm like, bop, 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 And I didn't even answer what was your biggest regret. Well, we all know. Um, mm, not in the way you might, I don't really have huge regrets. That might really shock people, but there are things I would have done differently for sure. Um, and there are relationships I never would have allowed into my space, 100%. So um, there's that, but what's your best memory? What is my best memory from YouTube? Let me think. Oh, these are some spidery big lashes. What do we think? Wow, she just went from like zero to 60. Um, my best memory was the Tati Beauty launch. Oh my gosh, I watch that video sometimes and I just can relive the night and it was the most incredible night unforgettable. Everything went perfectly. Like my high heels didn't even hurt. I just felt like a princess. Oh my gosh, I don't have this on right. I'm trying to do this with not a good mirror. All right, I am not so sure how I feel about these lashes. They probably need to be trimmed for my eyes. Okay, so yes, Tati Beauty launch party. I felt like a freaking princess. I was so proud of that palette. I got to meet subscribers and treat them to this fabulous event. And it just felt like this big, huge, I made it moment. Like everything felt right. Like that was one night in my life where even when we went home, like my sisters had come into town and we were just celebrating. And I was like, I've made it. Like I've made it and life is good. And then it was like, you know, so uh, yeah, but that night I will cherish. I will look back fondly and go, wow, this girl who started 
filming on a crappy camera in you know CVS teaching people how to score deals on makeup went from that all the way to look at this event and we're all celebrating this palette and it was the beginning it was so good and it was just like everyone was happy and it was one of the happiest nights of my life okay do a little a little lip I'm gonna go in with this Extreme Shine from Essence in the shade Dusty Rose. You guys, these are some of the best drugstore lip glosses ever made. They are so good. Just any of them. They're so, so good. Oh, I usually do this before lashes, but it is what it is. All right, you guys, this is the completed look. Thank you for hanging out with me. That got a little crazy several times. I am already fearing looking at the footage and being like, why would you say all of that? But uh, let me know if you like these more kickback story time, just like, let's talk about life. Let's talk about it all. I'm kind of tiptoeing more into opening up. It's a little intimidating for me for many reasons, but I do have this kind of feeling where I'm like, why not? share everything. Like, let's talk about it all. James here, just in the nick of time. I'm saying goodbye. I have been talking for so long. Oh my, oh, you're here with snacks. Okay. I thought your battery's almost dead. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and cut it and say goodbye now. And thank you so much for hanging out with me. I love you all. Come back again soon. Subscribe, ring the bell, do the things, leave me comments, and I will see you all in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.